Hello everyone and welcome to episode 18 of our Raspberry Pi series and in today's episode we're going to be installing LiDAR on a Raspberry Pi. Now this is a continuation of our series where we installed NZB GET, we installed Sonar and then Radar. Now Sonar is for TV series and Radar is for movies. Now LiDAR is for music. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started, we do not condone piracy in any shape or form. If you guys download anything through Usenet, please make sure you have the correct license to do so and that you are following the laws in your country. We are doing this for educational purposes as it's part of our Raspberry Pi series and we just wanted to showcase what the Raspberry Pi can do. We are using a custom setup with our Raspberry Pi, so if you guys haven't watched our previous episodes, your system may be different to ours. But just as a heads up, you're going to need to have Portainer and Docker installed and you're going to need to have um, external drive to store your data. You're also going to need to have NZB get installed as well as it configured to work with Usenet. So just taking a look at our network map, we're going to see how LiDAR fits in with our overall setup. It works very similar to how Radar and Sonar get their files from Usenet. So if you make a search inquiry in LiDAR, it will go to your Usenet indexes that work kind of like a search engine. They basically have NZB files that they have from um, news groups and they, they basically index where file locations are on the private service. So what will happen is if you put a search into LiDAR, it will go to Usenet indexer. Do you have the NZB files for these with the correct file and format that you set in LiDAR? It will then say, yes, I have that. It will pass it through to LiDAR. LiDAR will then pass it on to NZB Get, the downloader, which will then go through the Usenet provider and download the file that you need. NZB Get will then unpack that file. It will then rename it if you set that in LiDAR and then it will move it to the appropriate folder so then it can turn up in your media source. So that's basically the principles of it. In the previous couple of episodes, I showed you how to use NZB Geek. Um, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to presume you've watched them and that you know how to get NZB Geek. So please go back and look at them if you want access to that. I'm just going to go through the setup today and the configuration. Please let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for any future episodes. So if you guys are ready, let's crack on and install LiDAR on a Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. And we can do that by going SSH tap P, the port, which is 1984, and then our username, which is user1, and then our IP address of our Raspberry Pi. Press enter. We're now going to enter our password. Okay, so now that we're in, we're going to clear this out. And we're going to have a quick look at our stack from today. If you guys want to copy and paste this, there is a link in the description below in the resources section that will link you to our website where you can copy and paste this stack from our written tutorial that we have on our blog. Um, so basically, if you guys copy and paste this in, you just need to edit a few of the fields to match your setup, which we're going to do now. So we're going to need three files. We're going to need the downloads folder. In our previous episodes, we've already set this file up, so we're just going to link to that. If you guys don't have a downloads folder, you can create one. We're also going to need to set up a config folder, which is inside of our app data folder. Again, if you guys haven't got an app data folder, you'll need to um, create that today as well. And we're going to need to install a music folder. So the three folders we're going to need today is a config folder, a music folder, and a downloads folder. So we're going to create these three folders now. So we're going to navigate to our drive, which is our blue drive that we've been using throughout our series. And we should have in here an app data folder. So we're going to go into our app data folder. Okay, so you can see our previous containers that we've created there. So we're going to make a directory here and we're going to call it LIDAR. And we're going to go into that directory. And we're going to create another folder called config. And now we're going to go into that folder. So what we're going to need now is the absolute path. So we're going to do pwd and that should give us our absolute path for the config folder. And we're going to copy that. And if you guys have copied and pasted our stack from our website, you might want to put it into a text editor so you can add these fields before installing it on the stack. So we're going to look at this config location here. And we're going to replace this. So anything before this colon is external to the Docker container. And anything to the right of this colon is within the Docker container. So we're going to paste this in here now. Okay, so the next file we're going to create is our music folder. So we're going to come up a level. And we're going to go... We're going to clear this out again. And... We're going to go up one more level. 
And now we have a downloads folder here. So we're going to go into the downloads folder. And in here we have some folders. We're going to go into the media folder. Um, in here we're going to create a music folder. So we're going to go make directory and then call it music. And there it is. We're going to CD into that to change the directory. And then we're going to get to the absolute path by using PWD. So you can set this music folder wherever you want. You just need to make sure that it has enough um, space on it to contain all your music. Now, music files are very small. They're not like movies um, where they're quite large. So, you know, you might not need to have this on a massive drive. So you can, you can basically put this wherever you want. So we are going to copy and paste this now. And we're going to put it in here before the colon. So the last folder that we're going to need to create is the downloads folder. Now, as I said before, we already have this folder. So the downloads folder is used just to process the file. So when it grabs it from Usenet, it will take it into the downloads folder. It will then unpack them. Um, they're basically the, the raw files. It will unpack them and then it will rename them. And then once it moves it from the downloads folder, it will then move it into the music folder for us. So we're just going to go up one level. And we'll let the processing happen here. We're just going to get the absolute path for this downloads folder. And we're going to copy and paste that in now. And again, just before the colon. And we're going to paste that in. So we've done that now. So this stack is pretty much done. All you're going to need to know now is what your UID is and your PGID is. So your PUID and your PGID. So to find them out, as always, we've just got to go ID and then the username that you use with Docker, which mine is user1. And there you go. We've got 1001, which is the UID, it's the user ID, and the 100 is the group ID. So mine's set up perfect, so I don't need to change that. The time zone is Europe, London, where I am. Wherever you guys, you'll need to change that to your time zone. To find that out, you go into Open Media Vault and you go to Date and Time. And it'll tell you the exact format that you need to put in there. So this is Europe forward slash London for anyone who's in England. Okay, so we're going to copy and paste this into memory. And then we're going to go and create our stack now in Portainer. So you guys need to log into your Portainer instance. We've got ours here. We're at the dashboard. We're going to click on local. And then we're going to go to here where it says stacks. And we're going to add a new stack. And we're going to call this LIDAR. And we're going to copy and paste our Docker Compose text into there. And we've already changed all the fields in here. So this is all we've got to do now is click on deploy this stack. And that will go and grab the image for this. And it will also create them um, folder mounts that we need here for these three folders. Okay, so that's now finished. We're going to click on containers. And we can see our LIDAR stack is here. So it's on port 8686. We're just going to quickly pop into the logs here just to make sure that everything is working. And what you want to wait for in here is that when it tells you that the web server is up and running. So we're just going to wait a little couple of minutes. It seems to be changing a few of the file permissions. And there you go. It says starting web server. So we know that that's now up and running. So we're going to put on our Raspberry Pi IP address. You guys put in yours. This is mine. And then we're going to go to um, 8686. And as you can see, there you are. We now have a working LIDAR instance. So all we've got to do now is we've got to configure this to work with our Usenet. So we're going to click on system as normal. And here it tells us that we have no indexes available because we haven't set any up. And we also have no download client. So as I said before, that um, we need a indexer and we need a download client, which is NZB get. So we've already done that in previous episodes. We just need to configure this to work with that. So we're going to come into settings. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our indexer. And our indexer is NZB geek. So we're going to log in with our account. So NTP Geek is open to registrations at the moment. It is our test account. We don't have an active subscription with them at the moment. If you guys want to use indexes, they do cost money. Um, I don't know if there's any free ones offhand, but um, you know all the premium ones that you use, I know work very well. So we're going to presume here that we have an API key. So you guys are going to need to go to my account. And then under here where it says API key, you're going to have your Geek key. If you click on view, it will then show you that. Obviously, it's not going to show me this because I don't have an active subscription. Um, if you guys do choose to subscribe to Entity Geek, please 
know that we aren't affiliates of NTB Geek in any shape or form. Um, if Whatever indexes you guys choose, that's your choice. Um, you know, there is risk involved with them. You're giving your personal information to these companies. You need to make sure that the indexes that you're using that you trust. So now that you've got your API key from NTB Geek, so back in LIDAR now, we're going to click on the plus sign where it says indexes. Under news now, we're going to click on presets. Now, all the lists in here, these are all indexes that you can use. And again, we, are no, we have no affiliation with any of these companies. Use them at your own risk. Now, we are using today um, NTB Geek. So under API key here, you want to paste in your key there. And then you want to click on test. And as you can see, we've got a little green tick there to say that the API key is working with the website. Now, you want to click on save. So the next thing we want to do now is we want to set up our NZB Get um, download client. So we need to come into settings again and then just come down the line here where it says download client and we're going to click on that. And then we're going to click this plus sign here. And then what we're going to do is because we've installed NZB Get, we're going to use that. So you click on that once and then we're going to give it a name, which is NZB Get. And we're going to change local host to our IP address of our Raspberry Pi. And the port's the same. If you guys have changed your username and password for your NTB Get clients, then please set these to what they are. So I've changed mine to admin. And all you've got to do now, you've done that, is come down to the bottom. We're not going to use SSL because it's all done on our local network. I'm just going to click test. And you guys should get a green tick there. If you do, you click save. So now you've added your download clients, you are ready to search for some music. So you can go back to the home page. And you can go to add new artist and we can look for a band. And you can come in here now and you click on the band that it comes up with. Now under root folder, we created a music folder. So we want to try and add that now. So we're going to click in here and we're going to go down to where it says music. And then we're going to click OK and we're going to call this music. And we're going to put everything in there. Again, you can set quality in here. I'll show you that in a minute. And then click save. So under quality profile, I'm going to choose uh, standard. And then down here, I'm going to click on add the band name. Okay, so I've now added that band. And you can see down here on the left side, it started to search for albums that this band has released. So we're going to go back to the home page again. And you can see your band now that has been added to your home page. So we're going to click on that. And then if you pull this little button down here, you can see that it lists all the albums here that are available. So the only other thing that I would recommend maybe having a look at while you're in here is if you click on settings and then you come down to quality, you can set the quality and the size of the music files that you want and which ones you want in your profile. So there's different profiles in here. So if you hover over the category here, you can see the file formats that it um, allows. I mean, you might not want to download WMAs. You might just want MP3s. You can go in here and you can sort that yourself. Um, it's quite simple. You can even create your own profile here. Um, within here, you could just have MP3. And you can just get rid of all these that are in here and just add the ones that you want. So these are the MP3s. So through the profiles, you can really fine tune the formats that you want to download. So in the quality section, you can control the file size uh, for the formats that you want to install through your profile. So the profile has the file formats that you want to use. The quality has the file sizes that you want. And you can really fine tune these to match the storage capacity and also the sound and the um the compression and the quality of the sound that you want to hear. So this brings us to the end of today's episode. If you guys got benefit out of it, please hit that like and subscribe button as well as a notification bell so you're notified of any new content that we upload. In the description below, we use Amazon affiliate links. These are at no extra cost to you guys. We've gone out and sourced all the best parts that are compatible with our series and that work with the Raspberry Pi. So if you guys use any of them links, it's at no extra cost to you. We get a little bit of commission for each sale and we thank everyone who has been using them links. We really do appreciate it. So all this leaves me to say now is thank you Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.